Welcome to Uplifting Moments with Pastor Celeste Hicks, who is the pastor of Freshman Springs of Living Waters Worship Center, located at 3004B Beatty's Ford Road, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28216. Do you need inspiration, empowerment, and or encouragement? This is the show for empowered, you. equipped. Hello, welcome once again to Uplifting Moments. I'm so glad to be with you today. I'm Pastor Celeste Hicks, and we have a word from the Lord for you that will lift you and inspire you. But as always, at the beginning of the program, I like to quote the words of David He, when he cried out to God in the third Psalm. He said, O oh Lord, many are they that rise up against me. Many are they that say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. You are my glory and the lifter up of my head. Praise the Lord. Is the Lord lifting up your head from way deep down on the inside? God wants to lift your head. Do you not know that, that the cares of life and, and griefs and, and anxieties can cause your head to begin to bow down and your shoulders to stoop? But the Lord says to us, cast your cares on me, for I will sustain you and I will strengthen you. Do you know Jesus? Well, I tell you, when you get to know him, you will find that he is the lifter up of your head. And today I want to briefly talk with you about a Bible character, the, the man David. And we meet David as a young teenager. And he had been uh, keeping his father's sheep. That was his job. And he did it as well as he could. He took care of his father's sheep if it meant that he had to kill a bear that was coming after the sheep, he did it. And he did it in the name of the Lord. When a wolf came, he did it. He slayed the wolf. He did it in the name of the Lord. And today, you and I might be fighting what is called a Goliath because David literally had to fight Goliath. And so I want to give you a few scriptures that may encourage your heart today if you're fighting a Goliath. No matter what station in life you are in at this time, God loves you and God knows you and God cares about you. And do you not know that you can just simply take him at his word and begin to speak his word and his name and God will surely deliver you. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, call unto me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things which you have not even known. Call on the Lord. So today our first scripture is from Joshua 1 and 5. And these are the words of the Lord to Joshua after the death of the great leader of Israel, Moses. This fifth verse says that God assures him, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. And the Lord will put out those nations before thee, little by little. And you can reference right there, Deuteronomy 7 and 24. And it says, and he shall deliver their kings into thine hand. There shall no man be able to stand before thee until thou have destroyed them. Now these nations can be tight to problems in our lives. Um, the Canaanites, the Amorites, um, they, they were, the, the land of Canaan was full of people. It was occupied. But yet God told Moses and then following him Joshua to go in and possess the land mm -hmm. and so many times when we God gives us um, an assignment and gives us promises along with the assignment because he promised them that it was to be a land of milk and honey thank you Lord mm -hmm. the milk um, typified strength when you enter into this land, you're going to find out my strength in a greater way. Mm. Hallelujah. And the honey typified the sweetness that's in Christ. Oh, taste and see mm. 
that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. He's sweeter than honey in the honeycomb, David said. And so, um, Joshua listened to the Lord. And he took the Lord seriously. The Lord also assured him. And I want to let you know that when you hear God, and sometimes you might want to doubt, God doesn't mind giving you reassurance. Mm -hmm. So listen to this reassuring scripture. As I was with Moses, mm -hmm. so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. God says that to you and to me too. Are you receiving this blessed assurance even now? Even now. God said, I won't fail you. God said, I will strengthen you. I will keep you. I will sustain you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Because when you belong to God, God is your greatest defense. He gives us a weapons of warfare that are mighty, mighty through God. And you're able to pull down these strongholds, which is typified in this scripture as nations. Just as you've seen God with your leaders in your life and in my life since childhood, I believe some of you, I, God has blessed me to meet wonderful people in my lifetime. People who have um, given me words of encouragement, who saw giftings in me when I didn't see it in myself. I was like David to, to, I, to some degree. I was the middle child, and um, I felt like my brother was more talented than I was, and my sister was more talented too, and I kind of just blended in, you know? But God kept telling me, I kept hearing him when I would go into prayer, he would say, but I called you. Mm -hmm. I called you. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And you know whom God calls, he qualifies. Praise God. I tell you, he's blessed me with some great mentors, great men and women of God who poured into me, mm -hmm. hallelujah, and gave me encouraging words and brought me to, to places that to step out into that I was afraid to, actually, you know. But God blessed me to step out into many areas of ministry. Um, but as I look at this point in time, I can say that it was little by little, just as our opening scripture said, God went before me and little by little, he drove out the enemy, mm. the occupants of the land. And, and for us in everyday life, these occupants are spirits or uh, mindsets, you know, and some of them are, as I call them out, if you recognize them, I want you to know that you can get rid of that tonight. Amen. Some of those occupants of the land that God has promised you that are trying to keep you from possessing the land are the spirits of uh, a mindset of always feeling guilty and having condemnation. Another one is a sense of foreboding or melancholy. You always feel like something bad. That can't be happening good for me. Always thinking that something bad is going to come. That's not of God. That's a mindset that creeps upon us because so many times we're surrounded and we hear the news every day. And we're surrounded by things that, uh, that is bad news. And it seeps away at our hope. Mm -hmm. Oh, but I say to you today, hope thou in God. Mm -hmm. Scripture says, why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. Why? For I'm going to yet praise him. I'm going to yet praise him. Mm. Can you help me say thank you, Lord? Thank you, Lord. Can you help me say hallelujah, hallelujah for your goodness, for your mercy, and for your grace? Yes. Your amazing grace. And you know, grace is also the ability of God working in you. Enabling you to do that task that seems impossible. Mm -hmm. To Joshua, this was a great big task. But God had prepared him. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. When that man Moses laid his hands on him and gave him a divine impartation. And said, you are going to take up this mantle. His leadership style was not like Moses's. But God didn't need him to be just like Moses. God needed him to be a warrior. Mm -hmm. And he was a leading warrior. I want to say to you today, fear no evil.
for the Lord is with you. He said, I will never leave you and I'll never forsake you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What is it that's occupying the land that you need to go into? The land that God promised you. That land where he said that's where your strength is. And that's where the sweetness in your soul is going to just overflow. What's in that land? Sometimes, as I said, feelings of inferiority. Lack of confidence. Feelings of, of not being worthy. These are feelings and mindsets, and sometimes they gain interest into entrance into our lives through words that were spoken to us or over us or about us. Mm -hmm. Because words are very powerful. Words, you, the, the, the power of, of life and death is in your tongue. Words are powerful. But so that's why God said, but little by little, I'm going to drive out the enemy. I'm going to put out those nations. Now tonight, or this day, whatever time you're watching, I want you to begin to believe God. I'm going to shift from Joshua to David. When David, in the 17th chapter of 1 Samuel, in the 16th chapter, he was anointed with oil by the prophet Samuel. God had told Samuel, get your horn and get your oil and go to Jesse's house. Because I found me a man. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And you think nobody sees you. Hallelujah. You think nobody knows the giftings and the things that God has said he's going to use you to do. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. But God speaks to his prophets. There's nothing done in the earth, but God doesn't reveal it to his prophets. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And God said, I found me a man. I want to say to you tonight, God sees you. And you, you who are a little bit discouraged and think that maybe your time is just about up, God said, not so. He's going to send the word to you. And tonight, today, I'm one of those he has sent to send a word to you to let you know, go forward. Face the giant. Even as David did, he had to face that giant Goliath. And you know how he slayed him? I heard somebody say, I don't care if, if David lost his agility and threw the, the rock up into the air because he did it in the name of the Lord. God took it and it hit Goliath right in the head. And he fell down. And then David could go up there and grab Goliath's sword and cut his head off. That's the kind of champion I see you as. That's how God sees you. And that's how God wants us to believe that he wants to use us in this day and this hour. God is not finished with you yet. I want you to know that. God said everything didn't happen when, it, when you had it scheduled. But I'm working. I'm driving out the enemy little by little. Have faith in God. I want to ask you to pray at this time. I want you to declare what Joel said in Joel 3 and 10. Joel said, let the weak say, I am strong. And another, uh, war, another translation says, let the weak say, I am a warrior. Hallelujah. I am a warrior. Glory to God. Did you say it? I hope you did. Hallelujah. For the angels act on the word of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So now, I want you to know... As we go to the Lord in prayer, lay your burdens down, hallelujah, and don't pick them back up. Give them to Jesus. Stay in the word of God. There's life in the word. Read the word, speak the word, sing the word, hallelujah, and pray fervently. God will answer you. God is leading you and guiding you in his truth. Amen. And certainly if somebody here might have gotten off the track, but I want you to know something. God hasn't changed his mind. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Turn today. Hallelujah. His arms are wide open. Thank you, Lord. The spirit of the Lord is here right now. So let us pray in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity once again to be on uplifting moments and to hear this uplifting word from the Lord. Lord, there are some who have gotten discouraged along the way. 
and they're sitting on the sidelines now. But Father, today, in Jesus' name, let them hear what you say. I will be with you. I will not fail you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Lord, this is my prayer today, that you will strengthen us with your might by your spirit in the inner man and bless the people of God everywhere. In the name of Jesus, lift us up above the storm. Lift us up above the, the, the wars, hallelujah, and the rumors of wars. Lift us up today. And we thank you for it right now by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you the next time. Love you from my heart. Be uplifted in God and go forth. Hey. <laughs>